Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we are going to be making this really beautiful tumbler. It's so easy to make. I know you guys got this. It almost looks like white honey wrapped around it. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys this. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today into the description box below so that you guys can purchase those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up prep these tumblers and slay all day. Let's do this. All right, we are jumping right into it here. I have a 20 ounce skinny. This is just a double walled stainless steel tumbler that I purchased through the Stainless Depot company. I went ahead and I prepped and I primed that just a basic white for my base. And we're gonna go ahead and mix up 30 milliliters of epoxy. Now I am using my quick dry epoxy from Illumilite. If you don't feel comfortable using your quick dry or a speed code epoxy, then go ahead and just use your regular kind. But I like using it this when it comes to making these swirls because I know everything's gonna stay put once I am done. Now, since I am using that quick coat epoxy here, I am going to be kind of working a little bit quicker uh, than I normally would because you only have a open time of about 10, 15 minutes. So you wanna move a little bit quicker when it comes to doing your swirls and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up and then I'm gonna start divvying up this epoxy into two other little measuring cups. Because to achieve that swirl look today, we're gonna be putting our glitters and everything right into the epoxy and applying it right to the tumbler. Super easy. I know you guys got this. So now here I'm going to put five milliliters into each one of these little cups, saving about 20 uh, milliliters in my, my main cup there for my base. So that way I have enough to spread around on my base. So five mLs go into each one of those other cups. So right into the one with the 20 milliliters of epoxy, because that's going to be our main base, I'm going to be applying this Pearl X powder pigment. I got it right at Hobby Lobby, and they sell it at Michael's as well. You just want to use your favorite white mica powder to color up your, your base coloring here. And this is what's going to give us kind of that almost looks like white honey look on our tumbler. So I'm just adding a little bit more. Just again, you just want to, you want to get enough powder in there until it gets that kind of shimmery look that you would like. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side and I'm gonna grab another one of these little containers that we divvied up five mLs into. I'm gonna go ahead and put my favorite white glitter into there. This is called Agenda, and you can purchase that glitter at sscglitters.com if you would like to. If not, just use your favorite white glitter that you already have on hand. Now into my last little uh, cup here that we, we divvied off five mLs, I'm gonna add some bubbly. This is just a champagne and opal mix. It's like a chunky mix. And I thought it went really well with what I wanted to do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit in there as well. Kind of stir that around, make sure it's nice and stirred. And now we're gonna get started on our base. So I have my 20 mLs of the white mica powder that we mixed up here, and we want to spread that all over our tumbler. Again, this is gonna be our main base, and we're gonna be applying the other glitters kind of in a swirl motion over top of this, but this is what is initially gonna give us that white honey look. So we're gonna go ahead and apply all 20 mLs of that epoxy right onto our tumbler. Now don't worry about any little swirl marks that might be in the mica powder and everything like that because we're going to come through and add some swirls anyways. So just get it applied and place it onto your turner. Now this is right after I placed it onto my turner. We're moving right into our next step. I'm going to go ahead and take my torch and pop any of those little bubbles, kind of get those out of the way now. And then we're going to move right into doing our swirls. And again, the reason why I'm moving so quickly is because I'm using that fast set and we only have so much time. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and move right into putting our swirls right into that wet epoxy there. I'm gonna be starting out with my bubbly. You could start out with either or, you know, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong when it comes to making art. But the only thing you wanna do is just make sure that your swirls are all kind of set in the same direction. So you see they're all kind of angled the same. They're all kind of going in the, in the same motion there. That's all you want to do. It's extremely simple. So I, lay, I layered on a little bit of my gold. Now I'm going to go ahead and layer on a little bit of my white as well, just going right in between, layering that up really good. You see I'm adding a bunch. I'm adding a little bit here and there. And you're just going to kind of come through and just kind of help it out with your popsicle stick just a little bit to make sure everything is kind of getting where you would like 
like it too. And don't forget to uh, get a little bit on the bottom there. You, you know, got to dress that up too. <laughs> but I don't want you guys to fuss with this too much. You're just going to get your colors layered on just like this. And then after you get your colors layered on, we're going to come through and we're going to take our gloved finger and we're going to start kind of dragging our finger through everything to kind of mix everything just a little bit more together. So again, not fussing too much. We're just gonna take a gloved finger and we're just gonna come through and lightly in the same pattern as everything else. See, I'm going in the same direction, same angle. And I'm just gonna kind of drag everything around just a little bit, just to help it out just a little bit. Because again, I, I know you, you guys are probably like, oh my goodness, yes, we know. I'm using my, my fast set epoxy. So this is gonna help everything kind of mix together a little bit more because that fast set's gonna start curing here shortly. <laughs> so that's just gonna really help us give us those swirls. Now, after I'm done doing that, I'm gonna come through with my torch, hit it up one more time, and that's it. I'm gonna let that spin and cure, and it should look exactly the same tomorrow as I'm leaving it right here. So while that cures, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our decals. So I found these decals on Creative Fabrica and they are so, every single one of them, the bee one, the flowers, and the honeycomb pattern, all off of Creative Fabrica. I absolutely love every single one of them. Um, this one right here, I'm gonna put the dimensions and everything down in the description box for you guys. It was a, over three inches, but I wanna make sure that you guys get the proper dimensions. So again, I'm gonna put it into the description right next to uh, the link to each decal because each one of these dimensions worked absolutely perfect on this 20 ounce skinny. So I wanna make sure you guys get the, the proper sizes here. So for this particular decal, the B1, I wanted to show you guys when I uploaded it, it actually had all these little dots in with it. And I just wanna quickly show you guys how to take those out because we all know that's not gonna cut properly. So. <laughs> All right, so I uploaded another one here. You see all these little tiny dots? We just wanna get rid of those. And right off to the right-hand side there, you can see where it says basic cut, and there's a bunch of circles. There's actually a little eye icon next to it, and you just want to cross out that eye icon and get rid of all those little dots because, trust me, it'll it'll save you. I, I mean, unless, unless you want to, I don't know. <laughs> it's completely up to you. But after you remove all your little dots, if you would like to, you wanna make sure that you highlight everything and weld everything together because this is pieces so go ahead and highlight and weld and get your sizing done for yourself there now for the flowers again I'll put the dimensions but four of these uh, fit right onto one piece of water slide uh, paper and I am using clear water slide paper for this now if you're new and you don't know how to use clear water slide paper I'm going to attach a video on how to use clear water slide paper I'm not going to go over it in today's video but you can definitely rewatch that video that I I, per, I previously made and you'll be able to uh, do up the clear water slide it's super simple again I know you got this but if you use the same flowers that I'm using here, there was just a bouquet with all these extra little greens coming down. I thought it was perfect because there's lots of little different patterns in the file that you're gonna be downloading from Creative Fabrica, but I just went ahead and chose this particular bouquet. I'm gonna get that printed out on clear water slide paper. And now for the honeycomb. So again, I'll make sure to put the uh, dimensions of what I did down in the description box, but you're just gonna get that print out on, on basic semi-permanent vinyl or however you guys like to do it. You just want to get that cut out and then we'll be ready to start applying our finishing details here. All right, our tumbler is nice and cured. Look at that. Looks exactly like how we left it, right? That's why I enjoy using the quick set for, for doing swirls. Very nice. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and clean up my rim really good. Didn't really need too much sanding. It, it was, it's absolutely smooth pretty much for the most part. If it's not smooth for you, go ahead and apply another coat of epoxy over top of it to make it nice and smooth. If, not, if it's nice and smooth for you, then we're going to go ahead and move on like I am here. All right, so for my B decal, I cut it out on this beautiful textured gold vinyl that I purchased from Two Moms Craft Shack. I'll put that into the description box down below. I just thought it went really well, but as you see, I didn't finish um, getting out all the little details from out of there because I figured it'd be a lot easier just to do it right onto the tumbler. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the backing pulled off here. And when I go to apply this to my tumbler, I want to place it roughly in the middle or in the in the center of my tumbler because we're gonna be doing stuff at the top and at the bottom of it. So you want it about in the center of your tumbler there. So just go ahead and get that burnished down. 
Now, I like doing this trick when I have lots of little things that need to be weeded. It, like I said, it just makes it all easier because especially when we're working with a circle, I don't want to accidentally move something around and then my circle kind of gets deformed and, and all that stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and weed everything right off the tumbler here. But I really love this decal. It says, be well, be loving, be sweet, be kind, be strong. I really like that. Super cute. All right, let's move on to that next step. So the next step is we're gonna start putting on our honeycombs and I want that to go behind my water slides. So I already have my water slides all cut out, sealed, cut out, ready to go. And I'm just gonna use that to kind of figure out where I want my honeycombs to be. So I'm just going to take that. I know I wanted some flowers at the top and at the bottom. I want some around the back as well. So I'm just kind of figuring out exactly where I'm gonna be putting these honeycombs. So after I get that figured out, I'm gonna go ahead and take groupings of three, and I'm going to place that not directly in the center, I'm gonna place it off center, because once we put our flowers down, it all kind of makes sense, you know? So I'm gonna put some off center off to one side at the top, and then I know you can't see it right here, but I'm gonna do the same exact thing where I kind of put it off center on the other side, and I'm gonna bring it up here so you can see it, there you go. So just a little bit off center, so that way our flowers have room to be up there as well. Then I'm gonna take this rest of that large grouping right off to the side there, and I'm gonna place that right into the center of my the back of my tumbler here and you just want to make sure that it's even with the front so I'm just going to take that tube out and then I'm just going to eyeball it there we go <laughs> just want to make sure that it's about center with the front there we go and then I'm going to come through and I'm going to add just one extra off to each side so one extra on the top here just right off to the side and then one extra right off to the bottom. I just kind of like the way that looks after the flowers get applied and everything. It all kind of ties together really well. And then I'm going to take another grouping of three and I'm going to place it on the bottom, just making sure that it's lined up with my front here so it all kind of makes sense. And there we go. Now our template is down. Now, it was a couple years ago, I actually made a coaster very similar to this, and I used alcohol inks, which you could absolutely use alcohol inks to do this and kind of spritz it with your rubbing alcohol to give it more of that kind of honey look. But I wanted to go ahead and just use this really beautiful pop of color. It's called Blush, and it looks exactly like vintage blush from Rust-Oleum. There we go. I couldn't remember the name of it there for a second. But I have a little makeup sponge that I purchased through the Dollar Tree there, just a real cheap sponge, or you can use a little paintbrush, however you guys want to do it. You know, whatever you have laying around, just use that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can even use that paper towel you have sitting there. And you just want to dab some of that coloring right around our honeycomb pieces. Now, as you've seen, I'm just using a little bit of the coloring right off the lid. I'm not fully saturating this. I just kind of want just that real faded, just very light coloring around it. So nothing too crazy, just just a little bit of color to give that, that honeycomb a little bit of a definition. Now to kind of blend it in, I'm gonna show you guys once I, I turn it around here. I'm actually going to take it and make sure it kind of has that swirl motion with the rest of our swirl. So after I get this bigger one done, you'll, you'll kind of see what I mean. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to kind of dab into the direction that the swirls are going just so it all kind of cohesively, cohesively, there we go, goes together. There we go. <laughs> Like I said, you don't want to oversaturate your coloring. You just want enough to, to give that, that shadowing of the color so you can see the outline of your decals here. Now, after I got everything all filled in, and by the time I went ahead and I wiped off my table and all that, it was already ready to go ahead and peel back the decals. This stuff dries super fast, so go ahead and peel back those decals. Then after you peel back the decals, you're going to want to take it outside and give it a nice spritz of your two times ultra. That's going to make it so that way we can go ahead and move on to applying our water slides over top here. All right, our clear spray is nice and dry, and we're ready to move on to applying those water slides. I really enjoy using clear water slide paper. I haven't used it in so long. I, it's It's been a while since I've done a tutorial with it, but it used to be the number one thing I used all the time. So I'm here I am going to just line up everything I wanna do. Now at the top there you've seen, I just wanted to line it up and I wanna make sure I cut back anything that I'm not gonna need. So I just go, went ahead and removed a little bit of that extra stuff along the top. I set it in my water and now I'm just gonna slide that right off onto my tumbler. Now you just wanna adjust that down. I didn't mind that it was covered 
covering up some of the letters. I didn't want it covering it up too much. You still want to be able to read what it says up there. And I'm going to go ahead and form that down right along the bottom there. So that way it kind of gives it that just extra look of wrapping around the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and get all that extra water out from underneath. But if you see, I didn't place it all the way over the honeycomb. I just placed it halfway over that honeycomb. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing. Just a little bit over that honeycomb to kind of give it just a little bit of a, you know, extra look there. Just a little bit over that. Make sure you bring it back up off of your wording a little bit. Make sure you smooth all that water out. And the front here is nice and done. I'm just going to wick that water away. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the back as well. But this is what the front should look like so far. So just a little bit over each honeycomb and then we're gonna go ahead and flip that over. Now for the back, I wanted one at the top here. So I'm just gonna slide that off right onto the back. I'm gonna wick that water away. So just making sure that it lines up with my decal in the front. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put another one on the bottom with the greenery kind of facing up. So the greenery is coming down on this way and then the greenery is gonna come up on this other one. And it's just as easy as that. So I'm just going to continue to kind of smooth all this water out from underneath my decals. It's very important because if you don't, um, it could dry kind of like a white color. And that's how you know that there was a gap underneath or there was some water underneath. So we don't want that. Just make sure you get all that water out. You're going to set that off to the side and let that dry. I let mine dry for about 15, 30 minutes just to really make sure that it's nice and stuck down to my tumbler before I get it epoxied. And then all you have left to do is getting those last finishing coats applied. I'm going to go ahead and apply two last finishing coats. I, I do this one and then I do a second one over that. I just want to make sure that I come through and sand that rim down one more time before I apply the very final coat. So that way if any of those water slides happen to be up by the rim, I get those off. I'm going to go ahead and hit it up with my torch, let that cure, and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.